Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Welcome to Vision 2030. My name is Anam Chowdhury and I'm the host of this show. Vision 2030 is a community development program of Channel S and the Bangladeshi Regeneration Council. We're working together in the sustainable regeneration and renewal of our community here in UK so that by 2030, our community, the Bangladeshi community, should no longer be regarded as one of the most deprived and disadvantaged community groups living in UK. Currently, our community uh, is facing uh, many challenges, uh, challenges such as 28% uh, of our community currently living in some of the most deprived neighbourhood. 58% uh, of Bangladeshi women are not in employment. 65% of families are living in low-income households. And two out of five men are uh, working in low-skilled employment. But also, our community has the lowest level of English language proficiency compared to any other community groups in this country. And that is not really acceptable. That is not acceptable to the third, especially to the third generation of young people who's living in UK. And that is why, and that is why we have introduced this program so that we can talk to you uh, and the community at large to share our successes as well as identify uh, issues and uh, solutions to some of the problems that our community is facing today. However, despite all the challenges that our community is currently facing, that our, uh, our community has also produced stars, stars um, of today and also stars of the future. These are young people who have grown up to be role models, role models not just for our communities, but all communities uh, in, in this UK. Now let's introduce uh, some of these uh, role models and stars from our community and talk to them about their personal journey and hear from them about how they progressed in life and also that we can be inspired, motivated and encouraged to achieve a better future for our children in our community. We have with us uh, Muhammad Ali, MBE. Uh, hello Muhammad, um, welcome hello. to the show. Muhammad is, uh, is, is an internationally renowned artist and his art is appreciated by people all around the world. Uh, Mohammed has exhibited uh, your art um, uh, in cities like New York, Chicago and, uh, and, and Dubai and uh, you're currently the CEO of Soul City Arts and you're leading on a project called Knights of the Raj which is exploring the heritage and the history of the curry industry here in UK. Again, once again, welcome, Mohammed. Good to have you here, you here with us. Thank you, Anna. We also have with us um, Simon Mia. Simon is an uh, architectural and graphic designer. Um, you have designed, I believe you have designed the five pound coin in 2000, back in 2012 Olympic and that took place in here in, uh, uh, in, in London. And uh, you've done your masters from, from the Birmingham School of Architecture and you're currently working with um, the D5 architect on multi-million pounds airport projects that we've spoken about. Uh, earlier and also you're doing some residential uh, complexes design as well so welcome to you um, Simon uh, thank you for joining us uh, today thank, thank you, you. Uh, before we go to our discussion I would like to um, uh, I would like to ask our viewers at home that you can also take part uh, in our discussion today by calling on the number that you can see on your screen uh, below so um, and also, I think you can um, go to our Facebook, Channel S Facebook, and leave your comments on there as well. So we really welcome your input into our discussions that we're going to be, uh, uh, is going to be taking place now. So, Mohammed, uh, before uh, we'll start with you, really, and. Um, your work has been around the world. You know, you've, you've done um, uh, your work. Uh, you've worked in Dubai and, and various other uh, uh, countries in the world. But uh, and you've, I mean, China, um, I think um, CNN, uh, Al Jazeera, they've all covered your work uh, wherever you've uh, done them. Uh, but uh, you are from uh, the Bangladeshi heritage, but that's not very well known, is it? So why is that? Why is that? Um, I suppose it's it's really because I haven't made much noise about that, in fact. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, the matter, the matter is, um, it's probably because I've only more recently started to feel the, that, uh, that part of my identity. I mean, mm -hmm. we are kind of, as, as human beings, there are many kind of facets to who we are, mm -hmm. you know, multiple different hats we wear, the identity that we have, especially being born and raised in, a, you know, in, in, you know, in the different communities, mm -hmm. you know, uh, away from our parents' place of birth. So there's this, sometimes complex element of of who we are and you know trying to work that out so it's taken a while in a way but i've i've often as i said not made made enough noise about it and i've felt like more recently probably more so after the passing away of my father in fact where i started to kind of really 
ponder upon that aspect of my, my cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. uh, a large part of my work is about kind of my faith as a Muslim, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the art is, explores the kind of the complexities of, 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 of living as a Muslim in the West and exploring this aspect of, of society. But, but cultural heritage, as I said, I, I haven't, didn't really kind of uh, incorporate that much or even feel the need to, but as, as, as time went on and as I said, you know, pondering upon these important questions that you can't deny who you are in terms of your cultural heritage around the places where our parents were born, even though I was born here, disconnecting myself from there, even as even though I struggled with it at, at, at the start to understand my connection with the far off distant land that, mm -hmm. you know, I would go to every now and then during the school summer holidays. Mm -hmm. I felt more and more so the need, especially the, the social responsibility, in fact, in terms of after I, I'm having children myself and recognizing the need for you know kind of trying to trying to you know uh, i suppose throw the spotlight on on what i do as a way to mm -hmm. try to uplift others perhaps mm -hmm. who might who kind of identify with the similar journey the similar path that i might have taken so more recently i've, I've become very uh, proactive about kind of sharing my cultural identity as a british born but bangladeshi uh, uh, heritage artist how how important is uh, how important heritage and the history is to our community? Do you think? Well, as as I said, some of the art, the work that I was doing within the art that I do and the projects I was working on, you know, I'm about telling stories. As mm -hmm. an artist, that's what we do. We try to kind of say things in ways that, uh, in in, the, in you know, the others aren't able to do so in the kind of conventional forms. In the it, using innovative new ways and radical new ways of, of saying things if for you creative like. expressions yeah, really just yeah just exploring things that are a little bit just off you know a little bit off than the kind of conventional forms of okay. expressing oneself okay. so stories and narratives and the and our stories is, is something that uh, became part of what I do as an artist mm -hmm. right so heritage history who we are a lot of this kind of naturally came uh, into my work what I was mm -hmm. trying to do and I and I found that we as communities, especially as diaspora communities perhaps that are, as I mentioned, disconnected from these distant lands that mm -hmm. we kind of have this love and hate relationship with you feel like that. Mm -hmm. You don't quite understand it and you're, you don't feel like you belong there, but you, you're kind of exploring where is home, you know, this mm -hmm. idea of back home and what is it exactly? Is it really home, mm -hmm. in fact? So I, I, I recognize that I felt like this struggle that does exist, how we struggle with and trying to understand what is this home it's absolutely crucial if we mm -hmm. kind of deny that and I, I would say i'm guilty of it myself probably not exploring it enough not asking those important so how, questions. how has the young people because the theme of our show yeah. today is young people uh, how have they reacted to your work uh, do you have a particular target audience or is that your art is uh, yeah. is completely for all range of people but i want to know how how does the young people mm -hmm. really uh, um, uh, are they attracted to your work the, the form of art that you do and especially with the Bengali young people sure, uh, sure. that we have. Uh, is there any way that we can infuse them into, into the, mm -hmm. in the field of art? Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, art is certainly something, and when we say art, it's, mm -hmm. I think it's important sometimes to make it clear what we're talking about. Okay. Are we talking about entertainment? Are we talking about that art thing that a lot of people might say, well, that's not really for me. I don't go to the art gallery. I don't go to a theater. It's not okay. really for me. But actually, let's understand how creativity is something that is is, is part of human development. You know, okay. when we deny children from expressing themselves by coloring, mm -hmm. that's an important part of their human development. That if you suppress that, mm -hmm. when they grow up and become teenagers and we wonder why mm -hmm. we have an imbalance in our youth, in our, in society, whether it's people trying to understand, you know, like a problem solving, creatively problem solving, being creative and that drawing and painting that mm -hmm. we would perhaps may dismiss as being a waste of time. Okay. That's going to be imperative for that person when they're growing up, trying to deal with whatever it might be, the social issues, mm -hmm. creatively resolving that, you know, whether it's, you know, business, you know, whatever it might be, you thinking creatively by that, that crayon and that piece of paper it was, lot, was a crucial lot. part of, of yeah. how you're, how you're going to, your, your kind of trajectories. We will talk about more on, on the work that you do. Uh, I want to come to Simon. Simon, it must have been an incredibly proud moment when you found out that you were one of the two uh, who were selected to uh, design the coin for the Olympics. Tell us about, you know, how, how you felt at that time. Um, at that time, it was, it was absolutely amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. to be picked out of thousands of entries to actually have 
designed the Olympic coin mm -hmm. for the London 2012 Olympics was actually amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, even just coming up with the design, I mean, I think a day before, I just, I was, I was, I think I was praying um, the morning prayer Fajr, and then I went to sleep and I woke up with this idea and this vision of the, the buildings of actually commemorating all the architects which actually shaped London. Mm -hmm. As an art, well, as an architectural designer and assistant, leading my way up to being an architect, I was, you know, had all these architects in my head which designed London, shaped London, mm -hmm. and I wanted to use their buildings on this coin design and actually just present it the way I would want my buildings presented in the future. So I put that on the face of the coin and also had the pictograms of the Olympic sports all the way around it, like the the face of Big Ben. Mm -hmm. So it's basically giving homage to um, London itself and okay. actually giving it something back and something for the architects which shaped the city. Mm -hmm. So it was an incredible proud moment. Brilliant. And, and uh, you've studied architectural uh, design and yes. it's a very complicated subject, uh, subject, isn't it? I mean, yes. I mean, I'm going to speak about the, let's say, studying it as well. I mean, mm -hmm. from the, doing the, the BA at university, um, you start the course. It's a great course. It's, it teaches you the whole range of things. It's not just a course, let's say, which just teaches you law, let's say. Mm -hmm. It's a course which has a whole range of subjects within there. Mm -hmm. So we do have to learn law. We have to learn many, 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 part, many parts of it. It's just it was very complicated. So you have to learn design process, le um, actually working with clients, um, developing a brief, similar to actual art, because when you start the project, you know, you have a brief you have a, um, an objective to actually reach. So it's with architecture, it depends what it is, if it's public sector, if it's a school, if it's residential, clients will have an idea and then we have to make that into a reality, which is the creative process. So breaking that down is um, quite do, do, you, do you find many other Bangladeshis in, in that field? When you studied, for example, architecture at the university, um, were there many other Bengalis? Well, quite, quite interesting, being studying in uh, Birmingham School of Architecture, there was only one person in my BA, mm -hmm. uh, which was Bengali, and then in my Masters in Architecture, there was nobody Bengali. Okay. Saying something from the second city in, mm -hmm. um, in, in the UK, it, it's, it, I think that's a, it's a big issue. Mm -hmm. And I think more Bengali people should get into architecture because it is a respected um, career and it's also creative. So if you're into creative arts and creative um, actually shaping, if you want to shape the future, mm -hmm. what better way than becoming an architect? Brilliant. What really, I, I really want to know, what or who inspired you uh, in your path of success? Uh, Muhammad? I'm going to hand that over because, uh, uh, yeah, you, you go okay. first. Go on then, Simon. <laughs> um, I think what inspired me was, um, again, I think my family were a huge inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, being the youngest child, I've had them always to look up to mm -hmm. and them always pushing me to be creative. Luckily, mm -hmm. I had a sister in the arts mm -hmm. who actually, you know, helped us develop um, you know, artistic skills, let's say, and also using my science and mathematics skills. Studying physics at, um, at college, you know, it was very difficult, <laughs> but I was able to use that to actually, um, to actually make buildings and actually express myself creatively. I was going to go into film because I enjoyed films, and then I was thinking, what do I actually enjoy about the film? And it was actually the built environment. Okay. So actually in films, the, the sets, the design, and actually that led me to think I want to be an architect. Okay. So then um, looking at a longer term career path, I was thinking I can turn that into um, um, architecture and I have a career in architecture. So that's when I started my um, career, um, well, my, my first uh, degree in architecture and then on to the master's in architecture. So definitely I think family and also the greats of architecture. So all of the, the, the amazing the, the, architects. The environment, that the built environment. Yeah, yeah that, definitely. That, that I mean, seen. you walk around London, Birmingham, Manchester, anywhere today, any of these good mm -hmm. cities, and you can see some fantastic buildings. Mm -hmm. and of old as well, so we got these amazing cathedrals, amazing art galleries, which I, you know, I would suggest everyone to go to because they are a huge asset to um, to our society, and to, you know, it's definitely somewhere to go okay. and get inspired. Brilliant, Mohammed. Um, I mean, um, obviously, if, if you've started um, um, in in the field of arts from a very yeah. early age, yeah. um, so uh, how did you go about? Um, when did you realize that you were an artist? You know, I, I've struggled with it all my life, really, mm -hmm. uh, trying my best to shake it out of my system, okay. um, you know, as an artist. But I res soon realized this is what I, I, I am, I'm here to do, really, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so I suppose I was just had to had to need some time to think on that. But really, I would say it was a desire to try to uh, make a difference with the, with what I had. And I was, I suppose, in some ways, being a kind of... Um, an artist that was, you know, going against the grain in a way, even from the offset, from the beginning, mm -hmm. that, you know, art was seen as this thing that wasn't mm -hmm. conducive or, or in any way beneficial for society. Mm -hmm. And actually that, that is something that triggers the opposite, that actually makes you, rather than discourage you, mm -hmm. actually felt, it kind of empowered me to try and prove 
then it can be something that be a cause for for social change or some positivity for society mm -hmm. in a very literal way. I mean, the arts are often too often dismissed as this thing that mm -hmm. can't really benefit society in a very tangible form, mm -hmm. in a way that you could feel and see and see the the kind of the fruits of it. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, I, I would argue that you know that the arts absolutely should be at the forefront mm -hmm. of bringing it, dealing with these complex issues in multicultural societies, okay. whether it's racism or prejudice or segregated communities. They, they, sh they should be at the heart of it, and that's what kind of keeps me ticking, really. Okay, lovely. Lovely talking to you guys. I just want to remind our viewers at home, you can also um, take part in our discussion. I mean, our subject today is about young people. Uh, we are talking to some of the successful young people uh, uh, from our communities, but what we want is our community in general to encourage our young people to become more successful and also to pursue a career that is really uh, of their interest. Um, coming back to Simon. Simon, um, you're a very young person, um, and uh, I think uh, you, you've always had this inclination of helping others, and I've, I've seen you working with uh, various voluntary organisations. You've, you've given, done a lot of pro bono work, voluntary work for them. Um, tell me a bit more about uh, the kind of voluntary contribution that you have uh, you have made in, in, in our communities, and, and, and how important it is for our young people to take part in our community, be it in a voluntary yep. uh, position or on a training position. I think. I think this subject of actually doing voluntary work and actually pro bono work is actually very important way of actually people from, let's say, inner cities to actually develop. Mm -hmm. So um, what I started off when, say, when I was maybe 14, going to an Outward Bound course, just mm -hmm. learning about, um, you know, other cultures, other people, and then actually how to um, interact with them. And then that mm -hmm. took me out of my little small society, which was part of when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And then when I when I was growing up and then I was part of other charities, charity programs mm -hmm. and actually helping them develop their charity and also actually develop myself on my own set of skills. Mm -hmm. So I think it's definitely important. I mean, something which has played a huge part of was, um, the, well, the initial part of was Amira Foundation, which is a, a foundation which helps domestic um, abuse of sufferers. And that was an interesting time to be at because it was an in initiation of the, the, the charity with um, three directors and seeing how to take that forward and being there at that time, it was interesting to actually use that to develop my skills and abilities, um, you know, for designing the first website to, you know, helping out with the logo, so all of these things, and then developing even that fundraisers, events, actually, and presenting some of the, um, um, the shows and presentations, which was a, a very interesting time. So I think that was all very interesting and actually helped me develop during my time when I was studying, during my time when I was actually doing my degrees and, and masters as well. And I think it's all anything you do additionally to your studies or to whatever you're doing in your life it's all useful and it's all um, beneficial knowledge okay do you, do you come across any young people who um, uh, who are aspiring to be uh, um, architect in the future and um, I have um, various um, uh, relatives um, which had you know want to be an architect and you know various people which I meet along the way also I was tutoring at Burma School of Architecture as well um, a visiting tutor and w watching these you know these younger um, people starting their architecture careers it's interesting to see you can see who who are passionate and the ones which are passionate they will take it f through right to the end because it is a long course I mean if you do it from start to finish it's around seven years and much for more people it's actually longer um, but if you're dedicated and actually want to do something creative yet have um, you know, a career goal to achieve, mm -hmm. then I think architecture is definitely something which young people should look at, especially the Bengali community, because there is space mm -hmm. in Bangladesh. Pretty much every, let's say, Sileti person or person from Dhaka, everyone else wants to build their dream house in Bangladesh. So why not um, have um, Bengali architects doing that instead of um, foreign architects um, doing it? So I think there's definitely a space for um, Bengali architects in the mm -hmm. future. Brilliant. Um, coming back to Mohammed. Mohammed, I, I believe you've recently made a visit to Bangladesh and sure, you're exploring yeah. um, um, the connection between uh, different countries and uh, particularly we're doing some research on, on finding, some, uh, finding out Bengali artists in Bangladesh. Tell us about that experience, your visit uh, to Bangladesh. Uh, how did that go? Um, yeah, yeah, I was, I was over there as kind of a research trip with the British Council actually, just scoping out artists and arts organizations that mm -hmm. can connect with with us here and particularly okay. with Birmingham, Birmingham and Dhaka mm -hmm. and Karachi as well. I went okay. then went on to Karachi. So it's about kind of finding artists and looking, going out there and seeing who we might be able to bring out over here okay. uh, and connect 
with basically. But uh, I mean, it was an interesting experience. Uh, you know, it was uh, seeing how, um, how can I put it? There was all kinds of weird and wonderful artists that were creating crazy stuff. Yeah. Okay. And how crazy? I mean, crazy. some okay. of it, I mean, there's no doubt you think, really, is this really happening in Bangladesh? Okay. And in a positive way, but also at the same time, you th it was quite sad in a way that some of it, I, I was just blown away by. I just thought, okay. I, I, I feel like some of this stuff is, I mean, I'm not someone who just likes being controversial for the sake of it. I mean, sometimes I think we can quite, um, yeah, some of it was just tricky that I just felt this, this will only cause, you know, cause uh, uh, further, it's complicated, yeah? Uh, and I think we here in, in, in this society, when we're talking about uh, when our parents immigrated here, back in the 60s, mm -hmm. you know, I suppose they had this idealistic vision of what they think Bangladesh is. Mm -hmm. And through what I was saw, and, and certainly the circles I was in, some of it really was just a little bit out there. And I just okay. felt this would this wouldn't disconnect at all. In fact, they, I can see how there'd be assumptions that that would connect or that should be brought out here. Mm -hmm. But part some of it, I, I would say using my instinct and mm -hmm. being from this community, I'd say, you know, that some of this stuff is, is pushing too far and, uh, and, uh, okay. and can be almost be provocative for the sake of being provocative, if you like. But the reality is there's a lot of artists in Bangladesh with a lot of different variety of, um, um, you know, artistic intellectuals. Well, look, the, the truth of the matter is, right, I'm interested in the working class, mm -hmm. right? I'm interested in people who, who, who have not kind of uh, had those opportunities. This is where I come from, mm -hmm. right? This is where the majority of our communities in this country come from. So the reality is for me sometimes is that Exploring that really, going kind of digging deep beyond the usual suspects often that we, okay. where we might see. Uh, we'll come back to uh, our discussion uh, in a bit. Uh, now we have to go for a short break. Uh, please do, uh, do join us again here um, uh, with us uh, at the Vision 2030 talk show. And when we come back, we'll be talking about some of the challenges that our young people are currently facing uh, in this country. Uh, so join us back, please. Thank you.